and welcome everyone to Real Leaders for the Global Goals. I'm your host, Kevin Edwards. Along with me today, we have Christina Bortez, uh, the Director of PwC Sustainable Development Programs. Christina, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So why is PwC so committed to sustainability uh, and economic development? PwC is uh, one of the global uh, uh, sustainability consultancy firms. Um, really feel that we need to kind of play our role to work with the different uh, parties involved in the SDGs, um, you know, the government, the private sector, and us as a consultant, we have that kind of um, uh, middle role to try to work together to address these SDGs. We know there is a big gap between uh, the commitments the 192 uh, countries made in 2015 for achieving the uh, SDGs. There is clearly a momentum created around that, but without working together and to be fair, speeding up, we will not achieve these goals by working alone. So we feel that we have that important role to play between what the government uh, do, what the private sector does, and us as a consultant, how we can work with both parties to address that. And Christina, what are some of the problems that you specifically work on and how are you using the SDGs as a uh, structure to take on these goals? Yeah, so PwC has a, a toolkit called um, Total Impact Measurement for SDGs where we work with the companies to identify where they have the biggest impact on the different SDGs of the 17 SDGs, and then try to implement with them a strategy how they can go about addressing those SDGs. Personally, I work more on the social impact side of things. So our team has 120 professionals working on either the climate change aspect or the social impact aspect. I work with the social impact aspect of the SDGs, in particular the 1, 2, 5, 8, and 10, that looks at both um, uh, reducing poverty, but in particular the inequalities and the uh, issues that uh, women um, uh, face. Uh, in terms of uh, inclusive business. So let's take gender equality for an example. Mm. What type of metrics does PwC measure to make sure that you know you're on track and that you're doing your job? Um, so PwC obviously plays a dual role internally. We have our own targets set up in terms of women economic empowerment for the staff of PwC. So we have targets for how many women would get in the kind of board and in senior positions. Okay. And then we track that and we report in our annual report every year how we are doing to, towards that. But as consultants, we also advise companies or the uh, government. So I work a lot with UK government. And actually, I run a program called Work Opportunities for Women, which is a 10 million pound program um, uh, funded by UK government, Department for International Development, and I'm the program director. So I have a team where we work to identify where women are in supply chain of multinationals, identify the issues that they are actually facing, and then work with the private sector and the NGOs to address those issues. So just a kind of a flavor mm. of what we do, if you take some of the key issues women are facing are land tenure. The other one is uh, informal care that they provide uh, and uh, uh, they are not paid for or informal work they do in supply chain. So all this, if you just take an example, women work in um, agriculture. Quite often, the, although there are countries where they represent 70% of the workforce, in terms of their ownership of the land, uh, the percentage is more like 10%. So by not owning the land, they would face issues in terms of getting any collateral or being recognized for the work they do. The same goes with um, uh, work in agriculture, where they might work uh, in the smallholders' farm, but they are not recognized for their work. So they are not knowing where mm. these women are. You would not know how to uh, address the issue they might be facing. So one is data. So finding out where women are, and we have a toolkit again to kind of identify how we do that and work with some academics who are doing this in an academic way, and then translate that into what the businesses can do to really um, know what, uh, whom they have in their supply chain and the issues they face, 
and then together for business it makes business sense not only because there's some legislation like modern slavery and others come into place but also because by knowing who is in their supply chain, they would know how to work with them to improve productivity, which hits their bottom line, to address their uh, uh, labor workforce uh, issues uh, that then again, you know, kind of reduce absenteeism, for example, so that increase uh, productivity, and they would have more lawyer employees. That's incredible. I'm sure the impact by uh, making that change of uh, female balanced leadership, or I think you said ownership, uh, will make a big difference, especially in the agricultural in industry. Um, I guess the next question is, what's some of the pushback that you've received from that? I mean, if, if you go to an owner, does it vary depending on the country or the society based on uh, how they reflect and view women in that society? And how difficult of a problem is it in today's yeah. day and age? Yes, good question. Um, it does depend on the companies we're involving with, the countries we're working in, right? Because in many of the countries, if you take Southeast Asia, various countries in Southeast Asia, uh, we need to de deal with a lot of social b beliefs and social norms. Yeah. And uh, when we, in particular, when we work on women economic empowerment, is working with men, because some of this change needs to come from the men. So for example, just to give you an example, we work in factories in Bangladesh. Um, in the past, 80% of the uh, women in, fac in the factories were constituted the labor force. Now it's going down to 60%. Why is that? That's for two reasons. One is mechanization and the belief that only uh, men can uh, deal with machineries and now they are starting to employ men in those factories and when I went to some of these factories what actually machinery operation means is pressing a button but still in terms of the recruitment they recruit more men because it's just the belief that a woman would not deal with the machinery. Sure, okay, interesting. Um, Gosh. The other part is um, women progressing through the uh, ladder. Let's back up a little bit. How do yeah. you change that? Is it just the hiring? Uh, you got to go into the, the talent uh, acquisition and say, hey, look, like you need to hire more women. Uh, all your men do, are doing is are just pressing a button. Let's make this change. And how do you convince them of something like that? I that's think, so uh, you know ingrained into their yeah. know, religion or culture or society. Yeah. Um, I think it's... Uh, involving different stakeholders and it will not change overnight okay. and it will take oh, time, sure. right? Right, right? So basically, initially it's for showing the facts, right? So say the multinational, the buyers from uh, the US or Europe, you know, uh, who are buying from that factory, they don't know. Although they buy from that factory, no, knowing that this is happening, they will not do anything. Uh, so they can okay. obviously so, put okay. pressure on their supplier to say, right. no, you need to address these kind of issues because I'm taking responsibility for my supply chain. And therefore, if I'm buying mm. from you, I want you to implement certain policies and standards. That's because one. you want to increase your bottom line as well. Because you want to increase your bottom line. The other one is for the factory themselves, is obviously also in terms of the, the uh, price. Half of the right. population are women, right? right? So it's more costly for a factory owner to go and find these men now to do it and maybe pay them more and because there is also discrepancy in pay because they feel that they have a, a, a different skill set than the women they already have in factories. Got it. Christine, thank you so much for uh, enlightening me. I was curious about it. I'm sure our audience learned a lot too as well uh, about, about you know, what's really going on and, and how you're uh, using that triple bottom line approach to go in and say, hey, we want to check out everything, make sure everything is good to go because we know that our consumers are going to demand you know, this type of uh, uh, labor for conditions as well as uh, gender balanced leadership and uh, across the whole supply chain. Uh, Christina, uh, your, your work is, is impressive. It's new. I feel like uh, in the past couple of years, it's really taken off. Um, what's the vision uh, for you and your department at PwC, and what type of impact would you like to make? Yes, um, I think things have uh, started to change, but no, we're not quite there, right? Um, I was in a panel earlier on today, uh, uh, listening to some of the panel members where they were talking about, you know, kind of, Women, for example, are half of the population, but in terms of 
uh, their contribution to society and their recognized contribution uh, is more like the 10% that I think I mentioned earlier. So what, what needs to t uh, change? Obviously, all these beliefs and so on, but to me, we are during the fourth industrial revolution. Technology is going to change. Technology in terms of robotics, in terms of artificial intelligence, drones, and so on. First of all, on the women's side and economic empowerment for women, we can't exclude them. So it's everything from training and changing the social norms and beliefs. But the other one is obviously embracing technology. Mm. Right? So I think the future, we're going to see more drones, we're going to see more autonomous vehicles, we're going to see more robots. We actually estimate at PwC that, and we're working with Microsoft on that, that uh, AI, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, would continue to grow and that would contribute to kind of 4% of the GDP globally by 2030 in terms of the increase in GDP up to 4% all coming from AI application, but also 4% reduction from uh, uh, gas emissions that again, in terms of the climate change impact would be gaining the economic growth, but also gaining of reducing carbon footprint. So technology is gonna change um, and we should all embrace it. Christina, thank you so much for your time uh, here today on Real Leaders for the Global Goals. Uh, any last word do you have for our audience? Um, any piece of advice uh, for someone listening to this right now? The main piece of advice would be we need to work together. I don't think we can solve this alone. And I think government, companies, uh, NGOs, and us individuals, we need to invest our own time and think all the time the choices we make in terms of our climate and our people. For Christina Bortez, I'm Kevin Edwards telling you all to go out there and let's work together, people, and let's make the world a better place, just like Christina Bortez, the director of the Sustainability Department at PwC. Christina, thank you so much for your time. Very nice meeting you, and thanks for your time.